Okay, so uh, I'll start. Um, my name is Sasha Van Stratton. I'm the Director of e-Learning at Berkhamsted School. It's a big multi-campus independent school in Hertfordshire. And what I'm going to talk to you today about uh, really is, is using Google and various types of freeware and web two tools um, and the ways that we use them to promote independent learning uh, in our students. And we're doing that very much because we are aware that students will be moving on uh, in the main to university and we want to try and equip them with a better tool set when they come in um, to university and indeed to help them make better attainment during GCSE and A-level. Uh, what I want to do to start with is just show you uh, a short video that's made by one of my sixth form students called Adam. Um, I teach in media studies. This however has got nothing to do with his work uh, for me at A-level media. Um, Adam is not, uh, or it doesn't fit the pattern of what one might call a sort of classically academic person, but he is capable of producing the most amazing special effects, and that is the world that he inhabits, it's not a digitally driven world. Um, and when he joined me a year ago in the sixth form, uh, he says, you know, I said, I'm not brilliant at writing essays, sir, but, but this is what I can do. Uh, this is what I'm really passionate about. And I just want to sort of show this to you uh, as an example of the types of level and different, if you like, literacies that students are bringing in. So this is one of Adam's short films that he's made at home. Now it's been quiet. Yeah, nothing really. Oh, people like me in secondary schools don't apply uh, and our notions of literacy need updating and reviewing because what our students are capable of doing doesn't fit the current model of sit there, write an essay, I mark it and it's all text based. They, they have far more skills um, than we are, are really capable of keeping up to speed with. Um, and this also the idea of you know, intelligence and ability really is mutable. Um, when um, Adam's been going for university interviews this academic year. Uh, what, I've, what I've said to him is, look, I know you, know, you have difficulty expressing yourself verbally. You know, take your laptop with your films on, the, the material you've made for me, and you know, add something to go, look, can I just show you this? And open Pandora's box. And he did it, and I came back from, when he came back from his first couple of interviews, I said, how did it go? I said, oh, you're absolutely right, it, it's sort of going okay. And then I just said, can I open my laptop and show you some of these films? and the jaws of the admissions tutors dropped because they've never seen an 18-year-old produce work like this. And I think when I was thinking about what I want to talk about today, it was sort of quite a, a relevant starting point that what students can do and what they can achieve and what we as a secondary school think they should be able to go on and do at university is quite rapidly changing. I want to show you another video now. It's a couple of minutes long. And it's in French. The fact it's in French and if you don't speak French, it doesn't matter. Uh, but this is another great example of one of our sixth formers uh, called Alison showing what she can do with digital technology and using digital learning in a very different way. Um, the, the head of modern languages, uh, Laura Doggett, had said to her lower sixth French class, over Christmas, do me a review of you know, a French media text of some sort, like a TV programme, magazine, film. Uh, but because Laura's really interested in e-learning, she said, do... It doesn't have to be written. You could do anything you want. Maybe make a video, you know, a podcast. Just have a play. I'm interested to see what you can come up with. And this is what what Alison came up with. Voici l'histoire de Romeo et Juliette. Romeo et Juliette. Un film par Colin Sarrault de 1989. Mais si vous pensiez que ce serait l'histoire par Monsieur William Shakespeare, vous seriez incroyable. 
Ah, ça, c'est trop ennuyeux et trop sentimental. Au lieu de cela, voici une autre histoire qui s'agit de la richesse et de la pauvreté. C'est un film intéressant avec les concepts de l'amour et de la trahison en même temps. Les caractères principaux sont joués par Daniel Auteuil et Fermin Richard. Je suis PDG d'une entreprise de yard qui s'appelle Lolé. Je suis Zontiès. Je suis femme de ménage. J'ai cinq enfants et cinq pères différents. Cependant, il y a une louche affaire qui se passe dans l'entreprise. Deux ans, un de ceux qui travaille en collaboration avec le réceptionniste en poison le yard pour détruire M. Blanet et prendre en charge de l'entreprise. Juliette, la seule personne qui sait de cette affaire, parle avec M. Blanet et elle lui dit aussi que sa femme a une liaison avec son collègue. Qu'est-ce qu'il va faire Est-ce que Juliette son dernier espoir Ou a-t-elle ses propres problèmes qui sont plus importants Dans un film rempli de lumière, mais implique des sujets sérieux comme la race et le statut social, il réunit deux personnes très différentes. C'est une histoire incroyable qu'on ne peut pas oublier. Which isn't bad for go away and do a review. And again, Uh, Laura came to me in January and said, you've got to see this animation uh, and have a chat with Alison. Um, and in fact, she produced that on an Apple Mac at home using free software thing called Animate, so there's no charge for that. Uh, she's really into drawing, so she does have a graphics tablet. But really, I suppose the point for us about those students as change agents is that they are students even at a secondary level are coming to us with a far wider ranging skill set than we have. Um, And teacher uncertainty can't be a barrier. And a lot of what I do is trying to reassure my colleagues that it's fine to let the students go off and use what they know and actually let them teach you. And the idea of the sage on the stage doesn't really hold a great deal of currency. In a world where students can produce work like Adam's film or, or, or Alison's um, animation. Uh, and I think, you know, I hope you agree, that technology can be liberating. It was brilliant you know, to be able to have that as a learning resource that we can now show it on YouTube, we can show it to other students coming into the sort of sixth form. And I suppose this last point, the teachers can't know everything. It's, it's been the biggest project I've been working on for the last year and a half, is just to try and um, change the way that teachers think, as well as trying to change the way the students think about ownership of learning and using technology to do that. Uh, at Berkhamsted, we are, we are very if you like, web two literate. We have um, our own Facebook site for the school. Uh, where we can put notices up. Um, and interestingly, increasingly, parents are using that as a way of sharing information to do with, with learning. So the parents, as change agents, um, we are giving them that access. Um, we're not afraid to sort of use a, a social networking site like, like Facebook. Um, we've also got five or six different Twitter feeds. Um, and increasingly, at the sixth form level, students are using Twitter. That's how they are, are communicating with us. We have our own school YouTube channel where we put up um, all sorts of different uh, moving image content. I started that two years ago for media studies, A-level students, but in fact, increasingly, it gets used for all sorts of other things as well. Um, so, for example, there's a really interesting documentary that some, some sick have made called The Double Life of the Teenager, and it looks at the issues around uh, digital footprint, digital identity, how do you protect yourself, What are the problems with Facebook? Um, and it's quite incredible because you know, they, they, they've got some fantastic footage of, sort of students going mad and crazy at a party, but then talking about how they wouldn't want their parents to see that online uh, you know, the next day. Um, they've got a student there talking about making a, a teacher a friend on uh, Facebook, and then she basically gone home to do some coursework that should have been in that day, and it was for him, and he saw it because it was in the wall feed. So you know, it's, it's, it's quite interesting. Um, and, and that is certainly something that we are not, not shying away from. But in terms of the sort of main thrust this year for trying to get students to become far more 
uh, independent and to take ownership. What we've done is we've blended Google Apps for Education with Moodle. We, I inherited Moodle from my predecessor. Um, if you know Moodle, you know it's a very robust learning management system. It is, however, very clunky. Um, it doesn't allow uh, on-the-fly editing. Well, actually, the new Moodle 2 does, but, but when I was planning this 18 months ago, it, it didn't. Uh, and so we're looking at a range of different possibilities for making learning better um, and making life easier for the students. And in the end, this is our two criteria. Well, how do we make learning collaborative, always available, and the possibility is there for students to independent work? And how do we make life easier for teachers? There's no point in putting something in that's going to add workload. If it adds workload, nobody's going to go for it. Um, and so in terms of the sort of pedagogical aims of what we were looking at, Really, the aim was to sort of scaffold ideas and concepts to get students to think about it. Not, you know, you filled an A4 ring binder with loads of handouts, therefore you feel reassured. You may well feel reassured as a student, and as a teacher you might feel reassured because you've given a load of handouts out. But when we get down to show us how that's made learning better, where's the evidence? It's not there, and we wanted to sort of build these, as when we define these communities of practice, where we can see living learning taking place. Uh, and also to develop some research and assessment skills. Uh, I mean, I, I won't put the whole on this slide for long, uh, but you know, that was basically sort of for teachers and students, the way that we looked at it. Um, things like live marking, I do live marking sessions, so I will say to students, between seven and eight in the evening, I'll be marking your work. If you want to drop by online on Google, um, I will mark your work and prioritize it. And you know, I'll be marking an essay, and as I'm making corrections, I can see the student real time making those corrections above. So I can see, to have they understood. If I leave on a Google document a comment, the student can have make comments on my comments. So actually it becomes this living document. It isn't a static A to B, back to A feedback process. Um, we also sort of had Moodle and renamed it the learning platform. We created a single sign-on, we upgraded internet connection. So practical back-end things to actually make this possible. Uh, and I ran a 12-month pilot project with a handful of teachers and then ran a whole load of teacher inset on things like theories of education and technology. Nobody knew anything about it. They said, well, I just thought I had to produce some worksheets, then I ticked the CPD box. And we're trying to shift them away from that to really think about what does this mean? Um, you, you're probably aware of this, so again, I'll, I'll just skip, skim over this quickly, but Google Apps for Education gives you a Gmail account for every teacher and student branded as your school. You get Google Docs, Google Calendar, and Google Sites, and it's dead easy. You know, the way I sold it to the staff was I said, if you can use Microsoft Office, you can use this. And to the students, I said, this is Facebook for school. Two really simple messages, but it's worked. Uh, and it's true, and you know, it's a way of, of hooking up. So in terms of, sort of headlines, what's, what's this done since we launched this in September? We've gone from 50 users a week on Moodle to 800 users a week. I just sort of prove that to you. Here are the figures over the, the last two weeks. This is our holiday. We're not even in school. This is the last two weeks. I'm averaging even in the middle part of the day, 700 users a week using Google Docs mainly. So I know it works. I know the students, that's student to student. That's, that's not us. Um, you know, this is an example of, of some sort of real time editing. Uh, this is a great project where one of the English teachers had a class and she said, I'm going on a course. I'm going to set up a Google Doc with some sort of headlines, and I want you to create an essay as a learning resource, and I'm going to check in on my iPhone. And to a surprise, an hour and a half, two hours, half a dozen year 12 students produced a 5,000 word document. Uh, and this is the teacher, Rosie, and this is a couple of minutes of her talking about what happened. Yeah, I found it extremely useful to get my year 12 group in particular to work independently. For example, I've been teaching the Great Gatsby this term, and we've done a lot of detailed analysis in class and then I gave them a whole chapter to analyse independently in a certain way. I said to the whole class, just go away, add your ideas to chapter 12. I gave them some headings and they produced an amazing um, document analysing the whole of chapter 12. It was never come from me. I also included some web links, some extra resources and that has been particularly brilliant for me because we were running out of time, teaching time to actually cover this text. And what it's proven to me is that I've taught them the skills, they've gone away and implemented them and created something which is equally, it's as good as anything I could have taught them on that particular chapter. Which is quite an interesting point, you know. 
A teacher saying the students have done as good a job as I would have done. And that's the cultural shift that I'm really driving towards. Uh, Google Sites really has, has been fantastic because it's such an easy way to create multimedia content and, and be able to sort of track it. Um, and one of the things that sort of happened out of this was, was that um, uh, some students decided they wanted to create, as year 11 students particularly, uh, working with Rosie, they wanted to create an online literary magazine for particularly sort of year 11 girls. They kind of thought it was a nice thing to do. Um, what they then found was that students from all over the school found it and chipped in, and it just took on a life of its own. The students are, are now running it. Um, and it's been a really, really useful resource. There were some sort of year seven girls I teach, and they sort of just jumped in and, and helped themselves, which is great. Because, again, one of the things I've done is there are very few rules. There's nothing on there that says, contrary to the way a lot of schools work, thou shalt not do this, thou shalt not. It's just, it's there. Um, and the students themselves are finding new ways to use it. Uh, this is Naomi. Uh, she is a year 11 student. She's the editor of, of the Ink Spot. And uh, here's a, a quick conversation I had with her about it and about sort of students as change agents and, and digital learning uh, in general. Tell me what your sort of, you feel like your vision, working with Miss McColl, what was your vision for how this, this might work as an online collaborative project? Well, yeah, we really wanted it to be very student based, so not all run by the teachers, so I was going to help with that. And then um, we wanted it to be kind of like a blog, so we'd have sort of posts with different things that people could access really easily online. And in terms of of the student if you like, prior knowledge, was that idea, you mentioned blogs, was this something you were all comfortable with? Yes, well I mean we all have a lot of experience with the internet obviously, we've got it all the time, so I mean people are quite comfortable with sort of scrolling and looking at different things. And how did it work in terms of then actually getting content because when I look at who's using it, it was supposed to be a year 11 project, but it seems there are students from all over the school now finding it and getting involved. Can you tell me a bit about, about that and how that's, that's taken place? Well, I mean, word spread about the ink spot and all the year groups. I mean, everyone loves a bit of creative writing, everyone wants to get involved. And so, well, generally they email it to me, to my Google Gmail, and then I'll put it up using a Google Doc that I'll edit it. And, and this is a sort of new, new thing we've introduced this academic year. Uh, having Google Docs where you can put something online and share it with lots of other people in, in your class or across your year group, has that made a difference to you in the way that you and your friends work and you think about projects and ideas? Yeah, it has really made a difference because, um, especially with English, it's really useful to gather information. Like at the moment, we've got a To Kill a Mockingbird quotations Google Doc open. And we can all share quotations and things. And although Miss McCall, our English teacher, set it up, uh, it's all sort of student-based, and so it's up to us to And moving forward, do you see, because it, it, it's, it's been left deliberately open by me, so anybody can create a Google website, they can create a Google Doc, do you see us moving to a stage then where students just start creating their own content and sharing? Are they doing it already, for example? Definitely, I mean, yeah, they do. There are, I mean, if you go on the learning platform, the school one, there's lots on that. And I mean, definitely all the subjects could use it. I and mean, we use it for drama as well. And I mean, you can see all subjects. I mean, it's so useful to be able to collaborate on the information that you've got, especially for revision purposes and exams. And, and do, do you think, picking up on that point, do you think that this could be used by students as a way to actually feed back to teachers to say, look, as a group, we're not sure about this area of, yeah. of the syllabus? Yes, yes, definitely. We can, I mean, we can already Gmail teachers if we have any requests or problems that we're having with our homework, which is really, really useful. Because then you get sort of specific feedback for yourself. So in, in effect, it's it, I, because I, 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 my feeling with, with the students I teach is that the relationship between teacher and student is changing because of this, that the students are very much getting into the driving seat and be able to say, this is where we'd like to go and explore a topic, or this is how we'd like to learn about a particular area. Did you get that feeling that the, the teachers are open to that way of working? Mm, I think so, yeah. I think it's good that teachers are open to different ways of learning. I mean, in the end, it's us learning, not learning. So. And yeah, I mean, we're very technological nowadays, so I mean, it's good that everything's online now and we can access everything. Yeah, I think it's moving forward.
Great line there. It's us to do the learning, isn't it? And I think that really hits the nail on the head. Um, that you know, there's lots of, sort of academic theory about you know, moving teachers, particularly at secondary level, to be you know the guide by the side. Trying to do it with you know, 120, 130 odd teachers uh, and a big student population is quite tricky. But just to sort of show you some of the things that are going on here, we've got travel blogs. Um, this is a sort of student site that's just playing with it, they're just playing. I love this one, the various rules. All the students, this is a year eight girl, they all put rules up. I don't have any rules, but they put rules up. Uh, which normally was something along the lines of a teacher or, or me, Mr. Van Stratton, is looking at what you're doing and he'll tell you what. Uh, I just did rule number five, cupcakes. Rule number six, when in doubt, refer to rule five. So, you know, cupcakes clearly important. But you know, it's this idea of play with it, have an experiential uh, process, and then do something useful with it. It is really sort of driving what, what we're doing. Um, I realised two things actually, I was thinking about this this morning. One, I've only featured uh, female teacher and girls, but we do have lots of male teachers and boys. Uh, it's just sort of how the availability of students worked out at the end of last term. Uh, and also, just to say, you know, we are doing this with science, with maths, with all the departments. I just happen to have an English teacher to hand, and she's been doing some really interesting work. So that is why the focus is on that. But here are three years, seven girls, uh, with, with their thoughts on what we're doing. Well, we used one of the websites called Inkspot to. Uh to, it was to take part in a Harry Potter, a debate about Harry Potter, and so our teacher told us to like contribute to the debate and like post an argument, like um, of what we thought on the website. And so, especially it was like easy to see, like you could see what everyone else had done. So you could like if you were a bit unsure or so you could see what other people had said and try and get some ideas. That's good. And, and if you found it useful looking at what other students from other years throughout the school have been doing and thinking, what, what, what difference has that made to you? Um, yeah, it's made it much um, more helpful as you can see, get any ideas. And so if you're really stuck, you can get some ideas from there and see what you meant to do. Right. I, I, I'm interested in this idea of sort of students having more of a, a say because you've all mentioned that you can email teachers now and get quite a fast response. But Dora, do, do you think possibly you would feel more confident now, sort of saying to a teacher, actually, I'd like to build a website of my own or work with other people from other classes in my year group to sort of develop an idea that we've been studying? I think it does show show you how 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 much easier it makes for other people to use a website than to hand in or ask, like a question a teacher. And if I did, and it makes it easier if I did want to um, meet up with other students and not work on a project of some sort. And do you think that you'd be able now in the future, or in year eight, to say to a teacher? Uh, actually, what I'd like to do with this sort of subject, like say, you know, studying uh, Harry Potter or William Blake or, or Shakespeare, actually, what I'd like to do is, you know, create a sort of research document online. Um, can we do that? And actually, suggest to the teacher ways that would work that would suit you. Yeah, I think um, it's, it's easier to show how you feel about a project and what you want to do. Um, and it gives you a sense of freedom about how you do it and like a chance to, for you to decide what kind of subjects you want to work on. So it's quite interesting, even at, even at the sort of, if you like, the bottom end of, of where, where students come in year seven, age mm -hmm. 11, we are starting to work with them. I'm aware of spending time, so I'm going to skip over uh, Rachel. Well, basic Rachel's own learning resources. We are piloting Kindles, so students can download books and then share comments about them, uh, which is going great guns. We are one of a handful of secondary schools selected by Browns and Publisher to do a pilot study with basically kind of downloadable to smart device uh, online library, so that rather than a student physically going to the library, mm -hmm. uh, we deploy Wi-Fi if you've got you know, a Blackberry, iPhone, iPad, netbook, whatever, the student just goes, will go on wirelessly and download the books they need straight to their device, uh, which is quite exciting. That's really what, what she's talking about. But just go on to the last sort of bit then of some other things that we're doing now and, and in, in sort of short term. Uh, we've just deployed two things that link in with, with the students' Google accounts. 
called eBib and Avery, uh, which are quite exciting. eBib basically enables students to start creating a variety of different formats, but we're focusing on Harvard, um, their own bibliographies and citations. Uh, and again, this will be starting with the programme that Rachel and I are devising at the moment. So even from year seven, we want them thinking in an academic way. So by the time they get to you guys at the higher ed, this will not seem like an alien concept. It will just be something they do as standard. And if you like, the other sort of end is the Web2 multimedia uh, side of things. I don't think, by the way, it's about easy, easy because once you've created your bibliography, it will download it to work. So it's straight there or into a Google Doc. I mean, Avery is, is a brilliant multimedia tool that's free for schools. Um, and it basically gives you um, access to, uh, I'll show you one example here, uh, podcasting, music creation tools, things that look and work very much like InDesign and Photoshop, but it's free. All the processing happens on Avery's servers. So there's no load on us, there's no technical, if you like, load on us at all, or our IT infrastructure. We just have a big internet pipe and this does the rest. And it creates a separate folder in Google Docs called Avery Files with a URL. Student or teacher clicks on it, it opens this up. And, and it, for me, coming from a media background, it's amazing. And, and it works. I've had classes of 20 boys making multimedia content, and it, and it works. Um, so that, that's pretty exciting stuff. I think I'm going to have to stop you now. No, you're going to have to stop me. I'm sorry. OK, no worries. Somebody else needing to start up in here. OK, no worries. I'm glad I, I mean, well, no, I have to say, it's absolutely amazing stuff. Really exciting. It, it is. I mean, so the, I mean, the only other thing we're doing, we're deploying 60 iPads into modern languages to raise student no. attainment there. I wish I had been there. Yeah, which, which <laughs> is, you know, and I think that's, again, I mean, we're in a position where, because we're an independent school, um, uh, and I'm, I'm lucky the principal of the college chairs the independent school's IT council, he understands the vision of technology and education. Um, we can, you know, this has taken three months to put together a proposal, get the funding from the governors, and, and we're going ahead with it next term. So, you know, in that sense, what I think we are I'm speaking to people last, at dinner last night. I can move much faster than, than higher education can move. But I think feeling quite or lucky. Other, or other schools do. Yeah, or indeed other schools. Well, there are, there, there, are, there are other schools moving at that speed, but I think probably we are a little bit faster than, than the other schools we work with. Well, above all, that's just a fascinating insight overall into what some students are bringing into higher education. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think, again, one of the issues that, 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 that was really... It needs to be quite patronising for the last students. Yeah. Their levels, their levels of understanding. Yeah. Their levels of, uh, yeah. I think it's, it's quite worrying, actually, what students from a school like yours would anticipate they're going to get. <laughs> yeah. when well, I think this is... is <laughs> well, this one is... I mean, I've been speaking to yeah. some of our first-year yeah. undergrads who've come back, and, and they said, you know, well, actually, we, we did that with you, with newer kids. Um, and, and we were kind of wondering, you know, and, and of course they're saying, well, what am I going to be paying my fees for? And it's, yeah. it's interesting that that whole view of higher ed as a consumer service yeah. is, is an interesting area. You're a disruptive influence. Thank you, it's a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> and I like to change the 